discover your next favorite podcast with the Odyssey app from Who Done It to How to Do It. We have the biggest podcast for your favorite genre true crime, history, entertainment, and more. Getting ready for the midterm elections? No matter what aisle you lean towards, we have the podcast for you. From CNN to Fox News to exclusive podcasts from your local station. Find your next binge on the Odyssey app. On the Odyssey app. Every search you make, every click you take, they'll be watching you. Tired of companies like Google and Facebook watching everything you do online? There's actually a simple solution. DuckDuckGo. It's an all-in-one privacy app with a built-in private search engine, web browser, one-click data clearing, email protection, and more. All for free. Download the app today and get the most comprehensive privacy protection with a push of a button. DuckDuckGo. Privacy simplified. Your phone call is welcome at 869-1330. This is the John Whitmer Show on 98.7 and 1330 KNSS. Welcome back to the John Whitmer Show on 98.7 and 1330 KNSS, Wichita's number one talk. You can also listen to us by downloading the Odyssey app or by telling your smart speaker to play KNSS radio. And make sure you like and share the John Whitmer Show on Facebook. And, of course, follow me on Twitter at John R. Whitmer. That's the best way to stay informed on all the latest show updates. So for the first time since the Cold War, American officials are warning that the United States could lose a great power war, specifically to China. And while China's rise dominates the headlines, dangers from Russia, terrorists, Iran, and North Korea still persist. The United States can't rely on its military to overwhelm an opponent like it once did. That's in previous generations. Instead, the country must make choices deciding where to focus and where not to focus, what to do and what not to do. Failing to adopt the right strategy will result in crisis and very possibly war and significantly possible defeat. Joining us now to shed some light on this very real threat that China poses to the United States is Elbridge Colby. He is the co-founder and principal of the Marathon Initiative. He served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Strategy and Force Development from 2017 through 2018, during which time he led the development of the National Defensive Strategy. Mr. Colby, thank you for joining us this evening. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Bridge, let me ask you, uh, in your new book, The Strategy of Denial, American Defense in an Age of Great Power Conflict, you argue that, that with the rise of China as a global superpower, the world has, has fundamentally changed and America's, you know, the old legacy defense strategy is, is outdated. Are you really that concerned about our position in the world? I, I am, John. I mean, I think, look, fundamentally, we can talk about the nature of the Chinese government or the Iranian government or the Russian government, et cetera. But what really differentiates China is just how powerful it is. And it's really unprecedented for all of us alive in the United States. It, it would be, of our, you know, I guess your great, great grandparents by the last time the United States had another power that it was a rival with that had an economy the same size. That was 150 years ago. That was Great Britain. I mean, for the first time, we were bigger than the Soviet Union by a, a long shot. We were bigger than the Nazis. We were bigger than Imperial Japan. China has an economy that's as large as ours, and it's got 1.4 billion people, and it's turning that immense economic growth that it's obviously experienced over the last couple of decades into military power. And the reason that's so important, John, is that not only has China grown tremendously, but Asia has grown tremendously. So for many centuries, Europe was the center of world politics because it was where most of the economic power was, and that would turn into political power. And now that's going to be Asia. And if China dominates Asia, as it, I think, very clearly wants to do, it seems pretty obvious, uh, it's certainly the government's assessment, um, then our lives are going to be very, very different uh, here at home because they are going to have an enormous amount of leverage that, that I think they would. And, and, and I think it's very clear they, they, almost, they almost certainly would use against us to undermine uh, not only our prosperity, but ultimately our freedoms as well. 
So, so if we can't, you know, depend on our military strength or, or potentially our economic strength to deal with the threat that China poses, what do we need to do? What I mean, what do we need to change in order to keep pace or at least be competitive with China for that matter? Well, what we really need to do, the first step is to be very clear, as you said in the introduction, about what we need to do and how to do it. And I think we became very undisciplined after the collapse of the Soviet Union because we were so much more powerful than anybody else that essentially we didn't really need a strategy. We could embark on various kind of nation building exercises or kind of missionary pursuits abroad. Yeah, we've been real successful at that, too. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I mean, we weren't good at them. They weren't really necessary and they and we weren't good at them. So it's kind of overdetermined that we should stop those things. But I mean, I think the first step is to really, I mean, you know, if you're in a business or you're a family and you're looking, looking at your budget and you've got a constrained situation suddenly for whatever reason, you know, the first thing is, all right, what do we really need to pay for? You know, school or, uh, you know, clothes, food, et cetera, before you think about a second, you know, vacation or, or what have you, right? I mean, in this context is we really need to focus on making sure that we spend our money and our effort and our military power in the places where it's most significant. And I don't want to give you the impression that we can't deal with the situation. We can. My view is this book is designed to be that kind of strategic framework so people can see how we should think through this, in my view. And the key thing here, John, is there are a lot of potential threats out there, but by far the most consequential out there is a major, a great power, a superpower that can get control of a big part of the global economy and turns it towards us. Because, you know, Iran is very dangerous. North Korea is very dangerous. Russia even is very dangerous. But they pale in comparison to what China would be like if it dominated Asia. And that's what we need to focus on. And the way we do it is, you know, we are a superpower too. We shouldn't underestimate ourselves for sure, but we should also recognize this gravity of the challenge. But there are a lot of other countries out there that want to work with us to prevent China from dominating Asia. Japan, India, Australia, Taiwan, et cetera. We got to work with those countries to stand up to China. But what that really, really requires that we laser focus on China and Asia and not get distracted. And that's particularly relevant right now with what's going on in Europe over the Ukraine. You know, there's stuff going on in the Middle East always. North Koreans are always misbehaving. There's a lot of distractions out there, but we're we're so far beyond the point where we could afford to just kind of spend our attention and resources profitably all over the place. We really got to focus. Well, Bridge, here's my concern. How can a president like Joe Biden, whose family has troubling, deep personal and financial connections to China, be trusted then to make the changes necessary to keep China in check? I mean, this administration won't even investigate the origins of a pandemic that originated in a lab in China. So how do we trust that Joe Biden is going to keep China in check when his son has, you know, his hand in the cookie jar. I mean, it, I just don't trust that Joe Biden is going to do it. Well, I think, you know, the, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered on that point. And, they, and if the president, you know, and his administration can make it clear that they got nothing to hide on that, then, then, then they should make it clear. But those questions deserve to be asked. And of course, they were they were put in, put away and suppressed even before the election, which is right. totally inappropriate. But and I think that your point about the lab leak, I mean, how can we know? I mean, there's been no objective assessment. And the, and the Chinese have clearly been been hiding and not only been negligent, but been willfully uh, obfuscating and, and distorting. And I'd say lying about a lot of things. So we don't know. I think your, your fundamental point, though, is that, you know, I mean, the Biden administration has talked a lot about the China challenge. But when push comes to shove, they've got to be willing to put real pressure. And I thought, you know, I mean, whether we boycott the Olympics or not is not going to make a difference at the end of the day. But I mean, I think a lot of the response was, look, if we're not, you know, if the Biden administration itself is saying that the Chinese are committing genocide, the president himself said it, and all they can mount is a diplomatic boycott. Well, I mean, how serious are we really? And so I think this is the question that needs to be asked of any political leader in this country is show me the goods on how resolute and capable, how seriously you take it. The, the China challenge and how you're going to be able to deal with it. We're talking with Deputy Assistant Secretary, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for right. Strategy and Force Development, Elbridge Colby. I, I'm glad you brought up that uh, the diplomatic boycott of the Olympics, Elbridge. Uh, you know, th- that just seems so irrelevant. It's like China's going to sit there and say, oh, whoopee do. Uh, you're not sending yeah. a bunch of politicians. Great. That's what, you know, a few less people we have to provide shrimp and cocktails for i mean is that really any impact at all (laughs) no i mean i you know 
I mean, I don't think like even if I mean, Jimmy Carter boycotted the Olympics in 1980. And I mean, we don't exactly think of Jimmy Carter as the most, you know, aggressive president out there, but he did a full boycott. But on the other hand, it didn't get them to get out of Afghanistan. But I mean, look, what we really got to focus on is the military balance is our economic power is not giving them as the, you know, the communists used to say, you give the capitalists the, the rope to, uh, to hang themselves with. We got to, you know, I mean, we've offshored a tremendous amount of our industrial base critical elements of our national security and also just kind of our economy, semiconductors, for instance. I mean, these kinds of things, we got to pay attention to the, to the real core. And we're going to have to be willing to take, you know, my biggest concern, John, with the administration on, on China, I've got other concerns, as I'm sure many of your listeners do, but on China, is they're talking about it, and I, that's good, but they're also saying, hey, we're going to, like, compete, but at the same time, we're going to cooperate on all the things they claim to care about, like the climate change stuff, and the pandemics and, and pandemic and so forth. And I'm saying, I mean, this is just, you know, I, these guys are not naive. So I don't know what their logic is here. But it, the, the reality is that, you know, Xi Jinping lived five years in a cave. His father was purged during the Cultural Revolution. We might not like him, but he's a tough guy. We got to give him that. He's come up a nasty system. And I think he means business. And now he's got a lot of power to, to do with it. And I think he's going to take the measure of our leadership. They're going to look, of course, at our military power, at our economic power, which is very great, but is not as relatively great as it used to be compared to them, a lot less. And they're going to say, are these guys the kind of guys that, that, that are going to stand up to me if I, if I push too, too hard? And I think, you know, the jury's out, right? I mean, I think we'll see. Yeah. But I, you know, my view is let's not, let's not test that proposition. Let's be as, as strong and focused in the critical theater against the critical opponent because it's so much stronger than anybody else. That's that's where we need to put our effort and our strength. I, I fear after Afghanistan, I don't think anybody's looking at this administration and, and going to be impressed in the slightest. The, the book, again, is called The Strategy of Denial, American Defense in an Age of Great Power Conflict. It's available on Amazon. If folks want it, they can get a copy of it there. Right, Bridge? Absolutely, as well as other 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 outlets. Obviously, thank you again for joining us this evening. If uh, if folks want to connect with you, they can find you on Twitter at Elbridge Colby. Thank you again for joining us, brother. Have a merry Christmas. Carry on the fight, my friend. Thanks. And merry Christmas to you and all your listeners as well. We'll be taking your calls at seven forty five. But coming up after the break, former Johnson County Commissioner Mike Brown will be with us. Tell us about why he's decided to run against incumbent Secretary of State Scott Schwab in next year's Republican primary. You're listening to The John Whitmer Show on 98.7 and 1330 KNSS, Wichita's number one talk. We'll be back right after this. We all remember that one professor, the one everyone on campus had to take no matter what subject they taught because how much fun their class was. What if we told you there was a streaming service that had all those professors? One Day University has every must-have professor from the best colleges all across the country. One Day University, the most fun talks from the most fun professors. Available live and on demand. No homework, just the most fun you'll have while learning. Get a special offer at onedayu.com slash odyssey. Discover your next favorite podcast with the Odyssey app from Who Done It to How to Do It. We have the biggest podcast for your favorite genre. True crime, history, entertainment, and more. Getting ready for the midterm elections? No matter what aisle you lean towards, we have the podcast for you. From CNN to Fox News to exclusive podcasts from your local station. Find your next binge on the Odyssey app. On the Odyssey app. Hey, I'm Sammy Redwood, the host of a new podcast called Beyond Black History Month. We call it this because black stories should be told year round. We cover it all from the gentrification of today. We call this cultural displacement. To how Asian Americans worked with African Americans to help fight against racism. You can find Beyond Black History Month on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts.